We are going to discuss some trials that was released during the year 2022, discussing hi and highlighting some trials in GIT malignancies. The first trial we are going to discuss is a very interesting trial. It is a phase 2 non-randomized single arm trial. This trial was exploring the role of the Starlimab, which is an anti-BD1 agent in treatment of localized rectal cancer. Patients with stage 2 and 3 rectal cancers were involved. Only tumors with deficient mismatch repair tumors were allowed. Patients started receiving the Starlimab every 3 weeks for a total duration of 6 months with intermittent radiological and endoscopic evaluation. If patient achieved CR, no further treatment was required. If no CR, any residual disease, patients were supposed to go for concomitant care radiation and surgery. The primary endpoint for this trial was a co-primary endpoint of the overall response rate and the clinical complete remission. The results of this trial were reported during the last ASCO GI, including the results of 12 patients who received only the Starlimab None of them needed either concurrent chemo radiation or surgery. Clinical complete remission was reported on 100% of the patients. This makes it a very interesting trial. However, we should interpret this data with caution. First, because of the very small sample size and also because of the shorter duration of only 12 months of follow-up. The second trial is a very interesting trial, which is a dynamic trial, using circulating tumor DNA as a biomarker, guiding the decision of adjuvant chemotherapy for patients with stage 2 colon cancer. It was a randomized controlled phase 2 non-inferiority study. Patients were randomized either to go for treatment decision guided by CT DNA results or to go for the classical clinical risk factors for treatment decision guidance. In the group of patients with circulating tumor DNA uh, guided decision making, patients with CT DNA negative results, no further treatment was required, while patients who have a CT DNA positive disease were going to receive adjuvant chemotherapy. The primary endpoint for this trial was a two year relapse free survival rate, as well as the need for adjuvant chemotherapy in each group of patients. The results of this trial show that the trial met its primary endpoint. Treatment decision guided by circulating tumor DNA didn't show inferior results in terms of relapse-free survival compared to decision-making based on the clinical risk factors. Also, it is notable that less patients in the circulating tumor DNA arm required chemotherapy. However, this trial also should be interpreted carefully. First, the non-inferiority margin was very wide the other thing is that some important factors were not taken into consideration like patients with T4 tumor, the MSI status, this was not taken into consideration. And also, despite that, patients in the CTDNA guided arm who received chemotherapy were less. More patients in the CTDNA guided arm received oxaliplatin-based chemotherapy with all the known toxicities of oxaliplatin. For patients with cholangiocarcinoma, the addition of immunotherapy durvalumab offered them an overall survival benefit. This was reported by the 2001 trial. It was a phase 3 randomized trial, tested the addition of durvalumab to the standard chemotherapy of gemcitabin cisplatin. Patients were randomized to receive either gemcitabin cisplatin or gemcitabin cisplatin plus durvalumab. The primary endpoint for this trial was the overall survival. The study made met its primary endpoint with an improvement in the overall survival in favor of the Durvalumab arm. Another report for the same trial, exploring the efficacy of Durvalumab in different primary sites of cholangiocarcinoma, either intrahepatic, extrahepatic, and perihilar. The efficacy was consistent regardless of the primary site of the tumor. This could be a practice-changing trial because of the overall survival seen in this very dismal tumor. The LEAP2 trial explored the addition of immunotherapy pemprolizumab to lenvantinib as first-line treatment 
for the unresectable hepatocellular carcinoma. It was a multi-center phase 3 randomized trial. This trial has a dual primary endpoint, the progression-free survival and the overall survival. Unfortunately, this combination, despite it being a very effective combination in treatment of endometrial carcinoma, didn't show the same efficacy for hepatocellular carcinoma. Although there was an improvement in the overall survival with the addition of pembrolizumab with an overall survival of 21 months compared to 19 months with lenvantinib alone, this was not statistically significant. However, the performance of lenvantinib in this trial is remarkable because 19 months of overall survival is a remarkable finding in patients with hepatocellular carcinoma. Other trials explored the role of combination of immunotherapy together with targeted therapies like the COSMIC-1 trial showed some promising data. However, till now, lenvantinib is an approved first line with proven efficacy. Finally, we will discuss the ocular random study. The ocular random study is the first trial to report the efficacy of lutetium dotate in treatment of advanced progressing pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. This study is a phase 2 randomized trial evaluating the role of lutetium dotate in patients with pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors compared to sunitinib. Patients were randomized either to receive lutetium dotate for 6 to 8 cycles or sunitinib till disease progression. The primary endpoint for this trial was their progression-free survival at 12 months. The study met its primary endpoint. The lutetium dotate showed superior efficacy compared to sunitinib with around 80% progression-free survival rate at 12 month duration in favor of lutetium dotate compared to 47% progression-free survival rate at 12 months duration of follow-up for sunitinib. This trial is the first trial to show such efficacy in this very rare tumor for lutetium dotate and this makes it a standard of care.